It's the moment you've all been waiting for. News dropped that a new film is coming out in 2024 called Civil War. And what is it about? Oh, man, you better believe I'm excited. It is a film about a civil war in the United States. And I got to say, based on the trailer, I'm going to go, meh. It is funny that this trailer drops and I get all these people tweeting at me being like, Tim Pool, what do you think? Yo, let me start by saying this. The reason the movie exists has nothing to do with me. The reason I talk about Civil War is the same reason someone made a movie about it. It's the same reason Stephen Marsh wrote a book about it. It's the same reason why numerous news outlets have written the same thing. We are all looking at an ever-expanding culture war, division among states, and many people advocating for national divorce, including elected members of Congress. So. You may watch my show and think Tim Pool talks about this a lot, but I got to be honest, I probably talk about it less than many in the corporate press. As a large brand, several of these news outlets have way more articles about civil war than videos I produce. I'm a single, ter- I'm a single person. But if you only watch my show or you mostly watch it, you'll see stories about civil war pop up or the conversation happen. Somebody invested a lot of money into making a movie about civil war. Why? It's on the American mind. It's in the media. It's in books. It's coming from the mouths of Princeton professors. And that resulted in me saying, hey, guys, I think this might be right. Now, The Verge writes, the next film from the director Alex Garland looks like quite the action packed dystopia. A24 just released the first trailer for Civil War, which is set in a near future version of the U.S. that as you can probably guess is in the midst of a violent civil war with forces from Texas and California making their way to the White House. It's hard to glean too many story details from the trailer, but it features a small group attempting to infiltrate a heavily fortified Washington, D.C. It also features the tagline, All Empires Fall. So they got a lot of people in it. I'm going to I want to pull up the trailer here uh, for you. And I want to I want to I want to actually uh, let's let's re- let's review this thing. Let's talk about it before we do. However, my friends, if you want to help win the culture war, go to the best song ever dot com pre order together again. This is our new song. The reason it's the best song ever, and I can say that, is because it wasn't written by me. It was written by Smokey Mike and the God King. I don't know the writing credit goes, so I got to ask it. Jeremy Boring, most likely. And it's uh, Jeremy Boring and Michael Knowles of The Daily Wire wrote a song. We did a modern version of it. It is, uh, I, would, I would guess it's like synth pop. Promo is up on my Twitter account. And if you want to help us stick it to the machine and the man and have this combined F you to woke captured industry, pre-order the song now. It comes out on the 15th. It's going to be a lot of fun. But let's let's check out what's currently going on in American media right now. We have the Civil War trailer. All right, all right. Let's play this and see what's going on. Activity. The White House issued warnings to the Western forces as well as the Florida Alliance. The three-term president assures the uprising will be... Three-term president, Western forces, Florida Alliance. Let's uh, let's jump in. I don't want to watch the full thing, right? Let's watch. Let's, here we go. Swiftly. Let me know if you want to try anything on. I'm guys aware there's like a pretty huge civil war going on all across America. We just try to stay out with what we see on the news. Seems like it's for the best. So let me make a point for all of you right now. Oh, boy, I love it. So in the first scene, they're in a clothing store and the woman working the clothing store says, let me know if you want to try anything on. And he's like, you do know there's a civil war, right? It's an interesting thing that would never happen. Uh, in reality, when war happens, there will be no circumstance where someone walks into a store and is shocked and goes, you're still selling things, but there's a war. They're doing that for you because you're thinking that the average American has no idea what war is like. But as those of you who've watched my show know, in war, industry doesn't stop. I mean, it stops where it's blown up. But uh, take a look at videos coming out of like Syria during the Syrian civil war also long ago. I mean, like what, 10 years ago now at this point. And you'll see that people are walking through blown up streets and rubble everywhere, and they're carrying goods. Why? They need to eat. I tell the story all the time. I was in Egypt. I'm staring down from the Hilton building, watching a revolution take place. And right down at the base of this building is a McDonald's with some dude watching soccer. Like nothing's going on. We're in the middle of a revolution in Egypt. We take a car to Heliopolis and go to the mall. And it's people walking around. They're eating kebab. They're buying cell phones as if nothing was happening. And nobody stopped to ask about it. They went on with their lives. Let's play some more. 
So I guess Kirsten Dunst plays a journalist. You have this flag with two stars on it. I love this. I guess the argument is that California and Texas joined forces. Impossible. Of America, the so-called Western forces of Texas and California. Never going to happen. Texas and California will not be part, will, will not be a unified alliance with states between them. Why? Dude, Alex Garland, whoever made this movie, maybe they answer this. Maybe they create some kind of circumstance that makes sense. Fine. So be it. Perhaps it's just deus ex machina. God from the machine. They said it, so it's true. But if you actually read about the American Civil War, you'd know that Texas joined the Confederacy because of geography. Texas didn't actually, I mean, I mean, I'm sure there was still sentiment for Texas, but the issue was basically we are surrounded by the Confederacy. We cannot be a union state. We'll be conquered in two seconds. In the initial stages of the Civil War, we didn't call it the Civil War. It was called the War Between States. But even before then, it was called the Rebellion. The Confederacy didn't actually think there would be a grand scale war. And if they did, they would have taken Washington, D.C. immediately after the first Battle of Manassas, which they did not do. It was only as things got worse and escalated that the uh, Confederacy decided to actually march into Union territory. And uh, oh boy, did they fail miserably. Gettysburg, everybody knows, everybody knows how that went. Texas, being in the South, geographically was like, well, what choice do we have? If they remain a Union state, how will they connect to other Union states and transmit supplies? What does this even do for them? Now, you could argue the Union would have ease of access to entering Texas, and thus you would have a pincer move on the Confederate states. But the issue was actually simpler than that. When the states were seceding from the Union, Texas, nobody thought it was going to be full scale war. They just thought, well, our neighbors are the Confederacy, so, you know, we're going to side with them. The idea that California and Texas could come together, how? They wouldn't be able to be unified in anything. They're separated geographically. Have suffered a very great defeat at the hands of the United States military. Okay, so right there is a good one. In the reflection, you can see the map of the United States and there is California and Texas, they're blue. However, they say at the very beginning, 19 states had seceded. Of the United States military. Hey, I like 28 days later. Annihilation was kind of weird, ex machina was meh. President, do you regret the use of airstrikes against American citizens? Airstrikes against American citizens, why? They're moving to DC today. We need to go down there. Why would they go to D.C.? Another question. Journalists on site in the Capitol. Every instinct in me says this is death. What it Every time I survived the war zone, I thought I was sending a warning home. Don't do this. That, that's a good line, man. Every time I survived a war zone, I thought I was sending a warning home. Don't do this. How many veterans have said something similar, man? But I do have questions. I do. And uh, I suppose it remains to be seen, right, uh, as to why the Western forces are trying to storm into Washington, D.C. I got news for you. Occupying a building does not a government make. Have a nice day. In a real civil war, there's no reason for California and Texas to be unified. And there's no reason for them, even if they are, to actually try and take Washington, D.C. Now, if you go back to the Confederacy and the old civil war, why was that different? Well, as I stated, if the Confederates took it seriously and actually thought civil war or wide scale war was 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 likely going to happen, they would have after winning the Battle of Manassas, the first Battle of Manassas, they would have just stormed into D.C. They were very, very close, but they thought that repelling the Union out of southern territory was enough. They were wrong. See, the thing is, back in the day, occupying buildings did matter and occupying cities did matter because you scattered the capability of individuals to organize and it, they would struggle to then reorganize. Once you controlled a physical space, you could put pressure on other locations and crush morale. Your capital has fallen. We have your buildings. You no longer have the means to organize. The Confederacy didn't do that today. Why would that not work? Because the federal government is digitally organized. In the event that, that a capital building falls, all they need do is send a text message. Everybody organize here. The government stands. Communications is one of the most powerful, powerful tools in warfare. But here we are. There's some kind of misunderstanding here. What? Well, you're American, okay? Okay. What kind of American are you? What kind of American are you? Oh, yeah, okay. You don't know? You don't know? <laughs> The 
Western forces will reach the White House on July 4th. Oh Why? God. Why would the Western forces reach the White House? In the car. Get in the car. In a world where the country is being destroyed. I'm and then you can see the attacks that. on DC and all that stuff. There is. There is. Okay, okay. I, I want to be I want to be a little bit more reasonable. There is reason to strike DC. But let's be like, here's the issue. In the event of a civil war, capturing DC doesn't mean all that much, considering there's field offices in other places, there's building in other places, but it but it matters to a certain degree. You would have to an enemy, an enemy force attacking the United States would have to flatten all of D.C., basically eliminating every single HQ, taking away organizational capabilities. Yeah. With modern communications tech, it'd be fairly easy to recover, to be honest. But there are still some materials that would be lost. And, and that matters. That matters. It's not the same as it used to be. Even in the event the Confederacy took D.C., it would not have been the end of the war. But it probably, uh, who knows? It could have been a decisive victory. When the South took D.C., if they took D.C., they could have easily then rallied support internationally because it would appear that they were winning on the verge of winning. And, and that matters. Never forget, in the War of 1812, the British burned down the White House. The U.S. forces were trying to steal Montreal. And uh, for that reason, D.C. was unprotected. But that didn't mean the United States government fell or anything like that. Nation under God, indivisible man. With liberty and justice for all. God bless America. I'm actually uh, really excited to watch something like this. I think the imagining of what it could be like and how it would go, would go down would be particularly interesting. Give me a reason why Texas and California would be unified, though. I mean, they're, they're today very much at odds. I think even someone who was writing this two or three years ago would recognize California and Texas are very much at odds. And if you go further back, they're even more at odds. Also, how do you transfer resources between the two states? And that being said, they mention that 19 states have seceded. So I wonder if they call it the Western forces of Texas and California, not because they're unified together, but because California and Texas are the largest states among the 19 that seceded. And they're considered major, uh, like major strongholds for the Western forces. I think it'll be fun. And I think it will be enlightening to a lot of people, some of the concepts they present in this film. So without further ado, thanks for hanging out. The next segment will be coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast IRL. And we'll see y'all then.